Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and I want to talk about some of the news that happened this week. So Ricky Rackman gave an interview um, recently where he talked about uh, how Guns N' Roses guitarist Slash thought that he was a bad influence on Axl Rose. This was back in the late 80s when he owned the Cat House. I think this was before he got the job on Headbangers Ball. So during the interview he was asked, let's talk about the Cat House. The brand is based on debauchery but ironically you're sober. What's most challenging about maintaining sobriety when you're someone that people would want to buy a drink? Rackman would respond, it's different now because when I bought the cat house, I was drinking and doing a lot of drugs. It went from booze to coke to meth and it was a mess. There's a lot of people from back then who will tell you, when you've got Slash telling you dude you're a bad influence on Axel, don't be hanging out with Axel. When they're telling you stuff like that, it's like, damn, I would have died. It was difficult at first, but now I'm not the guy to stand on a pedestal telling guys, be sober, be sober, or I'm the sober guy and you should all be sober. I'll tell you, when I went to Slayer, I'm the first guy to go buy my fiance cocktail. I'm the first one to get drinks for my friends. I like when people get a buzz on, but I'm an alcoholic and a drug addict. I can't do that. I'm allergic to it, but they're not. So when people are buzzed and having a good time, that's okay. It's when it goes past that point. Are there times when I think about drinking? Yeah, but I don't want to because it's not an option for me. If I had a sip of beer, well, damn, I've been sober 33 years. You'll think maybe I'll have some whiskey and do some blow, but there'd be no stopping me. So in other news, Steven Adler gave an interview to Iowa's Laser 103.3, and he talked a bit about getting kicked out of Guns N' Roses and how he expected to have a larger role in the reunion. So he talked about how he was getting better from his addiction before the band fired him in 1990. He says, it sucks, but it's life. And I'm not the first. I didn't invent this stuff, and unfortunately I was born with it. What do they call it? Addictive personality. So Adler would go on to explain that he has always suffered with abandonment issues as well. His biological father left him when he was just a baby. And then he'd go on to say, and then the band just deserted me. And that was really crushing, stating that the event sent him down a pretty bad spiral of drug and alcohol abuse, saying, I could have gotten better myself, which I was doing before they fired me. I could have gotten better or went over the edge. There's two ways to go, up or down, and I went way down. It was heartbreaking. It was just too much. Overwhelming anxiety and depression being thrown out like that. He also reflected on the time he had to sue his bandmates to get his royalties back, as well as uh, some of the money that they owed him. And he said, and that was a shame, and that was even harder. So if you guys remember, Adler sued Guns N' Roses back in 1991, and in late 1993, he won a $2.5 million settlement and 15% of royalties off of any future earnings on songs he played on. But Adler said he doesn't like to dwell on the negative side of things, and he's still appreciative of the good times he had in the band and his long-lasting uh, friendship with Slash. So, of course, as you guys know, he was originally supposed to be playing a pretty big role in the Not In This Lifetime tour. He was supposed to play all the Appetite songs, but that didn't end up happening. And he, re he recalled on that moment saying, it was so amazing. I thought for sure Axel, Slash, and Duff were going to go, we've got to bring Steven in more often, but they didn't. And that's okay. He go on to quote Freddie Mercury saying, one year loved is better than a lifetime alone. So if you guys want to hear the full interview, I've linked to it down below. That does it for today's videos. Thanks for watching guys. Hit the like button and subscribe and go check out my other channel, Rock and Roll True Stories. We're quickly approaching 100,000 subscribers on that channel. So go check it out. The link below. Take care.